So here we have an SNMP management model. As previously mentioned, we have the query and the modify, and then we also have a trap operation. Query and modify is initiated by NMS. So the NMS send an SNMP request message to an agent. So this is the case here. I'm going to send the SNMP message. So the message can be a query or the modify. Then the agent is going to respond back to you. So the agent process the search on the MIB on the device for information to be query or modify and send an SNMP response message to NMS. So on e side, you are going to click on this button to say that I want to know the status of this particular interface. e side is going to translate this into SNMP message. In this case, it's a query and it will send to the agent. Agent is going to reply. You can see that the arrow are two way. Then we also have the trap operation. As mentioned, trap operation means you already set a predefined parameters in NMS. One is trigger. So if the trap trigger condition defined by a module are met, in my previous example, if the CPU is 80% for five minutes, the agent process send a message to notify the NMS that an event or trap has occurred on managed object. This is where if you are monitoring the network, you're able to receive this alarm. This alarm can also be converted into email or SMS sent to your mobile. This help network administrator promptly process the network fault. So here we have the SNMP management model. Now in SNMP, we have different version. In fact, we have three version. This is the earliest version that we have. We call it as a SNMP version one. So in this conversation, you can see the NMS is sending a get command. The get command means that what is the IP address of G0 slash 0 slash 1. So it's a query. The managed device upon receiving it is going to query the object. So this get command also issue together with MIB. Then the managed device is going to respond and it give the status of this IP address as 10.0.1.1 slash 24. Then on the NMS, I click on get next. So then it will move on to the next interface. In this case is gig 0 slash 0 slash 2. And promptly the managed device is going to respond the next IP address. Then the NMS is going to do a set command. Set command means that I'm going to set the IP address of gate 003 to 10.0.3.1. So once the set command is being sent to the managed device, the managed device is responding, mentioning that the setting is successful. And if let's say I do have a trap and this trap has been triggered, so the managed device also will send the trap as well. We have the SNMP version one. So these are the conversation on version one. So what's the difference between a version one and version two? So let's look into version two now. You notice that this is how the version two look like. On top, you can see that it's more or less the same. We have the get, we have the respond, get next, the set. But now we have a new command, which in this case is called get bulk. Get bulk is a version 2 command where it query the IP addresses of all interfaces on the device. So rather than you click on get next every time, you do a get bulk. And with the get bulk, it makes version 2c more efficient. So the rest are more or less the same. So these are the new enhancements. But there's still a weakness on version 2, even though they have the enhancement of the get bulk, which is security. So let's look into the enhancement on SNMP version 3. SNMP version 3 has the same working mechanism as in version 1 and version 2C, but add the header data and security parameters. So this is the big improvement on version 1 and version 2. So you can see that here, SNMP version 3 message can be authenticated and encrypted. 
SNMP version 3 is applicable to a network of various skill and has high security. So if we are going to implement SNMP, you will prefer that we use version 3 instead of version 2C. All right, so here authenticated all exchange messages and encrypt messages. So these are the enhancements. So as a summary on SNMP, SNMP has the following advantages. We are comparing between a web monitoring and CLI. So SNMP firstly is simplicity. SNMP is applicable to network that require high speed and low cost because it's used a pooling mechanism and provide basic network management function. Moreover, SNMP use a UDP to exchange data and therefore is supported by most product. So the first point on the advantages of SNMP is the simplicity and is supported by majority of the vendor. Second is the convenience. SNMP allow management information exchange between arbitrary device on a network so that the network administrator can query information and locate fault on any device. Remember, on the beginning, I mentioned if you were using CLI, you are going to manage it one by one. But using SNMP is being centralized and it's very convenient for you to locate the fault. So then we look into the differences between version 1 of SNMP, version 2 and version uh, 3. The summary here is SNMP version 1 applied to a small scale network where security requirements are not high or the network environment is safe and stable, such as a campus network and small enterprise. Then we have version 2. It applies to medium and large network, primarily because of its get bulk uh, enhancement on version 2C. So the security is still not really high because they do not support encryption. All right, but a large volume of traffic assist and traffic congestions may occur if your network is huge. Then we also have version 3, and version 3 is the recommended version and apply to the network of various skill. We are still using uh, version 3 now, especially those networks that have high security requirement and allow only authorized administrator to manage network devices. So these are the difference on uh, SNMP version. So let's look into the basic SNMP configuration. So assuming we are going to configure the SNMP on a router or the switches, the command is the same. First, we define the SNMP agent. We have to enable that. Then we have to tell them that what is the version that we are running, version 1, version 2C, or version 3. This is a command, SNMP-agent, sysh-info version. Step number three, we can create or update MIB information using a command called SNMP-agent, MIP view then you have the view name. You can include or exclude certain MIB or you can add in the mask. Step number four, you use the SNMP agent version three group name. Then you can do authentication because version three do support authentication. You also have an option to use no authentication or privacy. You have the option to use read view, read write view or notified view. So these are the permission. So this command is exclusive for version 3 only. Step number 5, you can add in a user if you are using version 3. So in this case, we are using a command called SNMP agent USM user version 3 followed by the username, then the group and the user group. Step number 6, we can configure the authentication. Again, this is a version 3 a specific command using snmp-agent-usm-user v3. Then we have the username and we can specify the authentication mode. So these are the options for version 3 authentication. Step number 7, we can configure the encryption. Again, we use the snmp-agent-usm-user version 3, the username. This time, we use a keyword called privacy mode. And these are the encryption that we can use, AES-128 or DAS-56. Another optional command here is to set the trap. 
Remember, earlier on I mentioned we can set some trap. If then we have step number eight is to set parameter for the device to send the trap. And the command is SNMP agent target host trap parameter name. So this is the parameter name. V3 security namespace, the security name, and followed by the option command authentication, no authentication, no privacy or with privacy. So this is on sending the trap and some of the optional command here. Then we have step number nine. We have to configure where is our NMS. So in this case, we can set our target host using this command as an MP agent target host trap host name. We have to specify the host name address and the IP address and set the trap parameters that we set earlier on on step number eight. Then we have to enable the trap using the SNMP agent trap enable. Then step number 11, we can specify from which source that this trap need to be sent from. So this is where we can specify the interface example, SNMP-agent trap source, followed by the interface type gig slash zero slash zero slash one, for example. Okay, so this is step number 11. Let's look into SNMP configuration example. The first step we need to enable the SNMP and the command for you to do that is SNMP agent. Then we set the SNMP version 3 group name to test and the encryption authentication mode to privacy. And here we have the version 3 and we have the group name called test and the name of this is called privacy. That is our authentication mode. Then we create a user called R1 and set the authentication and encryption password to HCIA-data.com123, uh, which in this case, this is where we configure that. This is a command here. Then the next step here is to create a trap parameters named Paris and set the security called SEC. And uh, this is a command for you to do that. So that is our security called SEC privacy. Next step is to set the IP address of the SNMP target host to 192.168.1.10 and here we have the command here SNMP-agent target-host trap hostname NMS address is 192.168.1.10 trap para name params. Then we set the source address of the trap is on the gig 001 this is here and finally we enable the SNMP we type yes so this is a command for you to configure the SNMP using version 3 with all the parameters stated over here you can try that in the ENSP but for you to make it work you still need to install the eSight which is a network management system